Here's the Steam controller layout for Rust that I made. Most of the other ones that I've seen, um, they always look complete, but then when you actually play the game, there's something missing, and it's always just a pain in the butt. So, uh, first of all, your hotbar down there at the bottom. I use the uh, left touchpad for just a circular touch. You don't need to click it or anything, and you don't even need to uh, start from the middle or anything. You just you get a natural habit for just going, oh, I want to, want to bring out my axe, three, want my gun, I could just tap the top of it. You don't even need to rotate. The rotate is nice for when you're like, uh, 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 yes, that one. And you can put it away as much, too. So, one of the big components, I'm sure everyone wants to know, is, you know, how do you aim for rust? So, the uses the traditional uh, bumpers in the back, the LN, uh, LNR bumpers. I did kind of take a few ideas from a few other layouts on the Steam community, but I've kind of cohesively put them all together because they're always kind of missing something. So this one, I did kind of yoink from the top one. It is, if you light press, you aim, but you have full move speed for your, or full, full aim speed. But if you click in all the way, it goes a little slower. Um, I also added in the natural, the putting your, right thumb on the touchpad and just moving the controller giving the uh, the gyroscope aiming which I always find is quite handy there see hit a deer and I've been in a few firefights before and uh, it takes a little bit getting used to especially holding this button lightly because the first thing you want to do is jam your hand on that and start aiming but then it's not moving fast enough um, and all that sort of nonsense. But that's that's about the only thing on the configuration that, um, and you can also change it. You can change it to where heavy press is full aim and light press is um, the accurate aim, the, the 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 slower aim. You can switch that around in the configuration all you want. So next few things are the few little touches that uh, I feel Rust kind of needed, or at least helps with the Steam controller. The crouching mechanic is. So back here, the back pedal, the right one is jump, and the left one is crouch. However, it is a toggleable crouch, so you can just tap it and then move forward to your heart's content, and you don't have to wear out your, your pinky or whatever finger you use to hold it down. You can also turn that off because there's a few times when raid raiding a base, you're trying to get up on a little ledge and you're trying to jump crouch and the toggle screws you up. Um, however, I keep it on for a toggle. Just it saves saves sanity because most of the time I'm creeping around in the woods trying to get up on somebody. So that's just what I do there. Now here's the other nifty little thing. Here is your map. The map in Rust is always kind of weird. You have to first have the map in your hotbar. Um, you don't have to select it or anything. For people who don't know Rust, you don't have to select it. You just have to have it in your hotbar, and then you have to hit the G key, and then to move around on the map, on the map, you have to click the right mouse button. So I automated a lot of things. So the right uh, trigger, not trigger, uh, button, the right button up here opens the map, uh, opens the map, and automatically puts the mouse in, and it'll do two things. So you can, you know, move move around if you want a little bit, and if you want, use the other button to, you know make a dick on your map, you know, traditional Rust style. Also, this is your hotbar, but with the map open, it's triggered to be the scroll wheel. So now you can scroll in and you can scroll out with the controller with the uh, left touchpad. I always, I found that was pretty nice. That was a feature that I found missing on a lot of Steam controller layouts is none of them really handled the map correctly. This needs to be automated right there. And then, a lot of times I've seen the use key is down one of the face buttons. Face buttons, um, you know, since we're talking about face buttons. So the Y button is for talk. Uh, I don't have a microphone plugged into my uh, Steam box, but so it says I'm talking, but it's lies. The the X button right there, that's, that's the reload key. So there you go. And then the A button is your crafting window and the B button is your inventory. The B button being handy, I feel, because the B button is always like a natural back out button. So when you um, open a box and your first reaction is like, okay, I want it out of the box, hit B. Boom. Nice and easy. 
the uh, the left button up here that is your use key and I found that being the best up there rather than, it was over here originally but it's on the left button over here because there's a lot of things in Rust you need to hold down the use key for such as your doors so as I'm holding down the left button I can use the right touchpad to mess with that and then if I want to make a selection just tap it with that and that makes it nice and easy something else I've found missing a lot of times is splitting the stack so you can just you know do that for the full stack and then click drag for whatever but the stick here the left stick will is holding down the middle mouse button and it will split the stack in half so you can just do that nice and easy and of course just shove it all back in there and of course the start button or whatever is the escape menu straightforward a lot of things I've seen so I play this on the couch right now that I'm at the computer but I play this on the couch a lot of times and uh, sure the microphone is useful but say you want to talk some trash the select button up here will bring up the steam uh, will hit the T key for chat and bring up the steam keyboard nice and handy so you can say you know uh, whatever you want as you can see I am not proficient with the uh, thing at all. So you hit enter and you hit done and boom you've uh, typed into the chat and you didn't have to whip out a keyboard or anything. It's all right here in here. And of course the same deal for you know just holding down the right trigger for you know throwing throwing objects at people and just use key. The, uh, the build mechanics are just as you'd expect them to be. You get your blueprints out and Hold down your button there for your wheel, and you bring up the wall. And you do you know, click there, and just find a place you want, and build yourself a safe space. Of course, see right now this is a, a bad habit. I've gotten used to is jamming my hand on the button here. So if you let go, you can uh, move around a little quicker. So I, I was trying to move, and you see it's moving real slow. But if I lightly tap on it. It'll, it'll move faster. Um, one of the things I tried to design, I'm not sure if it's Rust in general or the Steam Controller, but whatever, when you cram down for the slow sensitivity, if you let go, it doesn't always, I've tried to make it to where it stays, like there, there it's staying, moving from one to the other. Oh yes, I accidentally almost forgot one of my neatest features. Let's put away the gun. Oh yeah, so say you're, say you're, um, I almost forgot. I forgot two things. Okay, first things first. Your stick. When you're lightly pushing, it's just the normal W key. When you're full pushing, the outer rim activates shift. However, keep in mind, you don't want to hit the inventory key because it will bring up the Steam overlay, but uh, Steam OS would be like, oh, hey, and, and close that. Um, if you want to check your inventory while you're running, you have to do the normal thing in Rust where you kind of run for a little bit and ease up on it and then open it, but that's hard to do on the controller. That's about the only thing I couldn't get right on the Steam controller is messing with your inventory while running and something like that. So that's about the only thing. And I know that's a big component is doing a lot of that. Um, so there is that to be aware of. The other feature is the right touchpad um, I right now have a headlamp on, so if I double tap the headlamp, it activates the lamp. And that works for also the attachments on any of the guns that you have, for the flashlights or anything like that, it will also turn that on. And of course it's just a double tap to turn it on and off. Um, yeah, so there's that. So there's that other activation key. And you can see this This didn't take long at all. And Mainly getting used to the uh, the full press down here is about the only thing you have to be gentle with that. But other than that, uh, I believe everything in here is good to go. Uh, so let me let me go to the Steam window here and show off everything that's going on here. So it's just straightforward, nothing nothing too special. I'll give a link down below in the description for getting the Steam thing, the uh, Steam controller layout. Yeah, there's a lot of activators here. Yeah, three activators actually. <laughs> so it turns the, the right button here, hits G, 
activates in the left touchpad as a scroll wheel and then the uh, hits the right mouse just once and then you can easily if you want to you can make it the um, toggle from on to off for the crouch just right there it's just not not too hard to find oh yes okay there is another thing I forgot um, so when you're running around and you want to look you click in and you move around I don't want to run that way but um, you can do it for anything just uh, here let me bring out the gun that's more there you go now you can look around um, keep in mind if you want to look like all like if you clicked in the middle and just looked a little bit you only look a little bit and if you click all the way to the left and then scroll over then you get all the way um, I'll see if I can make an active ear. I'm still fine-tuning this, but I think I got it fine-tuned pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to make it to where when you click in, the sensitivity of the mouse is really high. That way you can look all the way around. But I figured I'll leave it here for now because that way when you're running and looking around, you don't want your, your thing to be like this when you're just lightly moving your thumb. Oh, yeah, the gyroscope did that. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, the double tap on the light is just brilliant. Uh, I didn't know I could do that <laughs> until a few days ago. Uh, there's a lot of little things the Steam Controller could do uh, that I did not know about till today. So yeah, there's the uh, complete Steam Controller layout for Russ that I made. Um, there are a few ideas that I yoinked here and there from a few others, but um, I'm hoping this being feature complete will... I'm able to play Rust from the couch just with this thing. Uh, the microphone being the, the big thing there. Well, I hope this controller layout for Rust is helpful to anybody. I sure enjoy playing it on the couch now with just the controller. Keyboard and mouse just seems like it's such a hassle now compared to uh, just getting this fun little guy. You can do so much. It's awesome. Well, there it is.